Hello everyone, and welcome to this episode of This is Islam. I'm Kai, and in today's episode we look at familial fay, namely the peaceful appropriation by Muslims of non-Muslims as booty when invading non-Muslim lands. Consider what we find in the Maliki school of jurisprudence. Quote, If a kafir, i.e. non-Muslim, fighter becomes Muslim, and the Muslims raid his country, then his wife is fay booty, and likewise his children, according to the well-known judgment. While it has also been said they are considered his, and his wealth is fay booty, while it has also been said that it is his, and it also has been said that it belongs to him before the division without payment and after it in return for payment. End quote. In other words, it is the preferred judgment in Maliki jurisprudence that Muslims invading non-Muslim lands may lawfully take as booty the non-Muslim wives and children of non-Muslim fighting men who convert to Islam pursuant to invading Muslim forces. Continuing, quote, If a woman is pregnant by a Muslim, she is enslaved, but not the child unless she was pregnant with him while the father was in the state of kufr, i.e. disbelief or non-Muslim, and she was then taken prisoner after the father embraced Islam, in which case the result of the pregnancy is faybuti. End quote. From the Shafi'i school of jurisprudence, quote, when a child or a woman is taken captive, they become slaves by the fact of capture, and the woman's previous marriage is immediately annulled. End quote. From the Hanafi school of jurisprudence, quote, He said, The person among them who converts to Islam, the meaning being in the Dar al Harb, i.e., the lands of war, meaning non Muslim lands, he protects himself through his Islam because Islam negates the commencement of enslavement, and his minor children too, as they become Muslims as a consequence of his Islam. He also preserves all the movable wealth that is in his possession, due to the words of the Prophet, God bless him and grant him peace. If a person converts to Islam while possessing wealth, the wealth belongs to him. The reason is that he was the first, in reality, to take it into his possession as a conqueror. This applies to a deposit in the custody of a Muslim or dhimmi. The reason is that it is a valid possession that is protected and the position of the custodian is like his own possession. If we conquer the enemy territory, then his real property, lands and buildings, are faybudi. A Shafi'i, God bless him, said that it belongs to him as it is in his possession and will be treated like movable property. We argue that the real property is in the possession of the residents of the territory and their authority, as it is a constituent part of their Dar al-Harb. Therefore, it is not in his possession in reality. It is said that this is the opinion of Abu Hanifa, God bless him, and one opinion of Abu Yusuf, God bless him. In the opinion of Muhammad, God bless him, which is also another opinion of Abu Yusuf, God bless him, it is like the rest of his wealth. This disagreement is based upon the rule upheld by the two jurists that physical possession of real property is not established in reality, while according to Muhammad, God bless him, it is established. His wife, who has not converted, is also part of the booty. The reason is that she is an unbeliever and an enemy and does not automatically follow him in his Islam. Likewise, the child she is pregnant with is booty, a shafi'i, God bless him, disagrees with this. He maintains that the child is part of her and stands enslaved due to her enslavement. While a Muslim can be enslaved in subordination to another, as distinguished from a born child, because such a child is free due to the absence of being a necessary part of another. His children who have attained majority are booty. The reason is that they are unbelievers and enemies and not subordinate to him. End quote. The same Hanafi source makes it a point to stress, quote, Statements of khilaf, i.e. disagreement, in the commentary. Conflicting opinions are quoted not for adoption of alternate rules, but to teach fiqh, end quote. The idea of fay comes from the Qur'an, for example, Surah 59, verses 6-7, to 7, quote, 
and what Allah restored of property to his messenger from them, you did not spur for it in an expedition, any horses or camels. But Allah gives his messengers power over whom he wills, and Allah is over all things competent. And what Allah restored to his messenger from the people of the towns, it is for Allah and for the messenger and for his near relatives and orphans and the stranded traveler, so that it will not be a perpetual distribution among the rich from among you. And whatever the messenger has given you, take. And what he has forbidden you, refrain from. And fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is severe in penalty. End quote. Fay conveys the general notion of non-hostile restoration. Everything in the world is for the benefit of the believing Muslims. Anyone who opposes this state of affairs is actually a usurper of the inherent rights of the Muslim Ummah as a whole. Hence, transfer of things and persons from non-Muslims to Muslims is restoration of the correct state of affairs. In other words, the Muslim Ummah is to prosper at the expense of non-Muslims. The peaceful transition of things and persons reflects this inherent world order. Such is the will of Allah. Muhammad is the prototype of this world order. Consider what we find in a Shafi'i source on jurisprudence. Quote, Our Prophet was exceptional in many ways, especially with respect to marriage that a woman he desired would be divorced from her husband upon his request. Allah Most High says, O ye who believe, obey Allah and the Messenger when he calleth you. Quran, Surah 8, verse 24. He could marry a woman to himself or to another man without permission. The Prophet could do this without permission from her or her guardian. Allah Most High says, The Prophet is closer to the believers than their selves. Quran, Surah 33, verse 6. End quote. In other words, just as how Muhammad is inherently superior to Muslims, Muslims are in turn inherently superior to non Muslims. The idea of Fay, which is intimately linked to offensive jihad, is to establish and enshrine in a so called peaceful manner the supposed superiority of Muslims to non Muslims. To really drive the point home, consider this personalized perspective of what is truly entailed by Fay. Suppose an Islamic caliphate exists. The caliph announces jihad against a particular non-Muslim land. You live in the land about to be conquered. You convert to Islam. No one else in your family is Muslim or wants to convert, for example, mother, wife, sister, daughter. Invading Muslims conquer the land and take your mother, wife, sister, and daughter as fey booty, enslaving and raping them. You have to peacefully accept that they are enslaved and raped because they are fey booty and you are a good Muslim. You as a Muslim have to pray in the mosque beside or maybe even follow as the imam, the man who is raping your mother, wife, sister, and daughter, and keeping them as slaves for his pleasure, enjoyment, and gratification. In concluding your prayers, you say, Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you, to the man raping your mother, wife, sister, daughter, and keeping them as slaves for his pleasure, enjoyment, and gratification. This is Islamic law. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Next time on This is Islam, I will discuss only Islam, namely that Islam is the only religion acceptable to Allah and only Muslims will be granted heaven. Stay tuned. <laughs>